Today I thought we'd look at cutting out from large pieces and just some little tips and things for doing that. Uh, I need to cut out some bag pieces for the messenger bag workshop and I'm using a whole side of oil tan calf um, which is really really huge. <laughs> um, I've already cut some bits out of it you can see um, that's kind of the end parts and if I go up here and I roll it's really really long um, which is going to be great because I'll be able to get my straps out of it. So there's a few things that are really useful to have around when you're starting to do something like this. I really love to work with the right angled steel square. Um, it gives just make sure that all your angles when you're cutting, you can always keep working and making sure that you've got your straight edges and right angles. The cork back ruler is also really useful because it doesn't slide across the leather um, and gives you a bit of an edge. And I also like to try and have a really long ruler, particularly when I'm doing bags, we've got a long line to cut against. The other things that are really useful are some weights. So I've got some rounded pebbles that I collect that I've used. Um, I also use my little mini block and I have some weighted door stops which uh, were from one of the other tutorials where I just keep shoving in bits of leather until they get nice and weighty and those work out really well for just holding things down without marking. Um, the leather so you want things that aren't going to mark or scratch um, the leather and just keep it in position. The other thing when you're cutting out any of this sort of thing is stropping. So I've got a variety of different knives and I use different ones for different areas I'm doing. Sometimes I will use my rotary blade, uh, sometimes just a standard utility knife and then I have my handy little clicker knife for where I want more precise things. Um, but before I start, whichever knife I'm using, even if it's a cheap one, I will strop the leather. So I have here one of our grey um, strops from the website and some Jewellers Rouge. Um, so whenever I'm starting off, I will first thing I will do is find a hard space, put some rouge onto the strop, and then I'm just going to strop my knife holding it at a bit of an angle, just a few strokes backwards and forwards. And you want the hard surface underneath to get the pressure and pay particular attention to the tip because uh, it tends to be that that we push in and blunt the most. And then we're ready to do some cutting. Now what you want to do is you want to look at your leather. I tend to work from the top grain side up, um, depending what I'm doing. If I've got pre-cut templates, then I can do that. Um, if I'm working and marking out, then I will flick it over and draw everything out. Um, but one of the reasons I do quite like working from the top grain if I can, and I've got the patterns, is I can see any blemishes or marks. I can decide what I'm going to accept and what I'm going to work with. Sometimes when you've got marks, what you want to do is to see whether they're just a characteristic, um, just a surface um, distinction, or whether there's a weakness there. So what you want to do is to run your hands over the leather and feel where there are any ridges or bits that feel of anomaly, and then lift it up and feel between the two fingers. And if you feel like a really thin area, that's kind of weak, um, then if you get a piece of chalk and just draw around that area on the top, you'll know to avoid that area. So before you start, just have a real good feel as well as a looking with your eyes. Um, it just really helps you to get the most out of the leather and then you can position it. Unlike fabric, leather doesn't have a warp and weft. So if you get stuck and you've got a piece, it's quite possible for you to lay it out at an angle and cut that way and avoid an area. And when you're doing component parts like this with a bag, I've got lots of small sections. So I know I can use each of those small sections right up to the weak spot or the little blemish. 
um, and use as much of the leather as I possibly can without it affecting the bag. Um, but in this case, this leather, I have checked it over. I'm quite happy with it. I've got a piece that I've just cut out here, so I've now cut three. I need two more. And I'm going to try to keep as long a length of this going up as I can so that I've got my long straps. Um, so I've come, so I'm coming close into this edge here. I have got some pieces coming down here and again I'm just going to keep them long while I can um, so that I can make the most of them that I can. I'm going to pull it down towards me now so that it's come, I'm working onto the edge of the table and I've just made a cardboard cut out of my pattern to size just so that I can repeat and lay it over and this does protect the body and surface area of the leather as you're cutting out. So I'm going to just wait those further up to stop it rolling forward while I'm cutting. I'm going to place my long ruler onto the long edge and I'm going to get my marble block and weight it at the long end of the ruler into the middle before I cut. And just before I do, I'm just going to check everything is lined up. Is at right angles and I've got everything where I want it. I'm going to also keep these stones handy and put them up this end here to stop it bowing and moving. Now when you're cutting you are not probably going to get through the leather all in one go. So you want to be making several strokes and working through all those meshed collagen fibres. Um, you might hit some scarring tissue, you might hit some sort of tougher areas, um, and sometimes it might just glide through. Um, so just take your time and take it slowly and work into that same first cut that you make, rather than trying to put all your pressure down and cut in one go, which is more likely then, particularly on a leather like this with the oil tanned, it's got a slight smoothness to the surface and the knife can just slide across. Um, I tend to always cut so that I'm cutting away from the body. So if I do make a mistake and the knife slides there, I can then move up from the next bit I'm cutting and avoid the body. So in this way, I'm protecting the body. So I'm just gonna make my line And I'm going to go back through it several times and you will hear the sound of the knife going through the leather will change as you get through to the cutting mat underneath. And it goes quieter there which means I'm through. I've got two big cutting mats joined together I join them with a bit of masking tape underneath so that they don't slide apart and the join is seamless on the top surface. Uh, so as much as you can you're aiming to be able to just get things out of your way so you've got a nice clear way to work. Now I'm carefully going to lift this without moving the ruler so I can just do the next area. And then holding my fingers on the ruler, lifting the weight off, and you want to slide the ruler up. These will now go down the other end. Again, lining it all up. The stone block now goes on to that end and you're ready to join the knife cut down to where you were. I'm going to pop that there and I need to just bring my right angle up my side here to meet and I'm going to take that line a bit further beyond so that I've got it ready for the next bag. And then 
being very careful moving everything off. Now what can happen is that your corners here you've just often got a small piece if you haven't wanted to take the cut line right across because you don't want to go into this part that I want to use for my straps. I'm just going to lift that up and just very carefully slide through the little line I've made to just free that section off and that's how I cut. So if you're in terms of um, laying out all your different pattern pieces I before I did any of this I had already worked out what I needed to do so I'd unrolled the whole thing and positioned everywhere so I know and I have a plan in my head. Quite often with my papers patterns and bits I will lay them out and then take a photograph and then move them all off again but I can use that photograph to just refer to to see where everything was laid out as I'm moving around. Um, if you have made a little slide line just keep an eye on this edge here and you may need to just recut um, if you need to start again for your next pattern block. I'm just going to cut the um, straps now um, for the inside of the bag and I'm going to use my strip and strap cutter for this. I've already got some nice straight edges from the pieces I cut off um, so I've just made a little nick in the top and a little wide bit a bit closer uh, to show so that I can pop this in to my strip and strap cutter. Now when you're cutting th with this with a thinner leather I'm going to do it a slightly different way um, so I'm just going to get it pulled out to get it started. Okay, and then what I do with this, rather than be drawing it down from a table, I'm going to do it sort of standing and pulling just very slowly upwards. So you're rather than drawing it, you're kind of just allowing it to keep in. I'm using these fingers down here to keep it butted at the side. I'm just keeping an eye to make sure it doesn't um, fold over. And as with any strip and strap cutting, when you get to the end part, this is where it's best to go very slowly. because I'm further into the leather I can now draw it down. Okay. Just gonna give that a check and see if there's any bits where I've got a little bit which was very tough there when I went over so I'm gonna cut that bit off and then I can lay over my short straps that I need to cut. So I hope you find that useful and love to hear as always what you're up to. Thanks so much for watching.